Why hello there friends, I'm Christopher and today I'm talking about digging fence posts specifically with an earth auger. This was a real workout. Well this auger that I have here is an Earthquake Viper 43cc. This beast was beautiful. I want to say the auger and the 10 inch bit that I have total cost me about $350 and let me tell you that was a whole heck of a lot cheaper than paying a guy to do this over a course of a couple days. Of course there's always a trade-off right? Labor is expensive but it's skilled right and those people know what they're doing and they do it quicker. It took me several days to drill my 42 holes. So let's talk about that. It was a lot of work right uh, I'm putting in I, I put in four by four uh, pressure treated ground rated posts that were sealed um, that was one of the failure points with the last fence that I took off this is part three of a seven video series going into greater detail on my fence and the last posts were cedar half of them were in cement half of them were not all of them had rotted by the end um, so I kind of overdid it on this let me tell you, you can watch YouTube videos until you're blue in the face and you can read forums and experts from all around the country have varying degrees of what they recommend for whole size, whole depth, ratios to how tall it's supposed to be out of the ground, how deep your hole should go in, etc, etc. How much concrete you're supposed to use, what kind of concrete. In the end you just have to make an educated guess based off of your scenario. So uh, if it's a 4x4 post they say at least your hole should be three times as wide. So a 4x4 is three and a half inches you know that times three is 10.5 inches. 10 inch auger perfectly good enough. Um, my posts at their highest stick up uh, 66 inches so not six feet. I got eight foot posts um, down here behind me they're uh, under four feet. Regardless, all of my holes I drilled to between 24 and 30 inches depth. Right around 24 I started hitting clay and it was fantastic. So this is one heck of a process. I would start start digging, fire this bad boy up, pull the trigger and start going and no sooner would I get maybe two inches in in some places when I would hit a root. So for this process, in addition to the auger, I also dedicated one of my chainsaw blades to being the earth blade, <laughs> right? Because I'd come to a root and I made a decision. Any root that was skinnier than the width of my wrist, I cut it. I figured these big old trees are strong enough, they can regrow it, they don't need it. But, you know, you got down deep enough and you would get to a main root, not necessarily a tap root, wasn't going to touch that. So the, uh, the chainsaw was really helpful getting some of those things as thick as my thumb that were going right in the middle of the path of the auger bit. Cut those and keep going. And then of course you get to rocks. I feel like this is a component that people forget, but uh, depending on where you live in the country, of course, your soil is going to be different. I've never had the privilege of dealing with sand. I've got clay here. Clay and stone, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how do you get rid of a stone in a 10 inch hole two feet deep? Well, you use a giant crowbar. I invested a, a whole whopping $25 into a 42 inch crowbar and let me tell you that did the job. You just stick that sucker in there and you pry out those rocks. And for every hole, every single hole that I dug, I'm sure I pulled out at least half a dozen rocks as big as my fist or bigger. Unbelievable. Just makes me think of what this area used to be like back in the day. I know here was, this is an old city dump like in the late 1800s. I pulled up some pottery too which was pretty interesting. No chests of gold but alas. Um, you know I should probably talk about some actual practical tips in this video. Well we talked about your hole width being about three times as wide as your post. The depth for me, I'm in Wisconsin. Okay, It's the middle of December and for some reason it hasn't snowed yet which is why I'm outside looking like this. I started my project a little late. I made sure all of my posts went below the frost line. That's pretty much the only extent. I went as deep as I could with this, right? So when I say between 24 and 30 inches, that's what I did for every single one. The only reason I stopped was because I would hit a main root of a tree and I just physically could not go any further. Um, every hole took, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes. That, 
that's just the nature of it. Uh, and it was quite physical, quite physical. <laughs> you know, you're holding this thing, it's vibrating on you. You've got the exhaust coming out. Make sure it's in the opposite direction if you're using this. I did get a sweet tattoo of my inner arm um, from the uh, the exhaust here when I was holding it the wrong way like a noob, but that's neither here nor there. Just the whole process of going down, lifting it up, getting the soil out of the way, getting your saw in there, removing your roots, getting your crowbar in there, removing the rocks, putting this back in, going up and down. Whew, it's laborious. My calorie intake certainly increased uh, and, and my weight stayed the same or uh, improved, shall we say, for this great physical process. But is it worth buying an auger if you have a lot of holes to dig? Yes. And if you think you're going to help people in the future, absolutely. Do you have a farm and you're going to be putting up posts randomly throughout the rest of your life? Yeah, you want to invest in one of these. Do you have just like 10 that you need to drill and you're in the city? Yeah, go to your Ace Hardware and rent one for 24 hours. That's going to be just fine. Either way, I highly recommend using an earth auger instead of just using a shovel or, um, you know, a fence hole post digger like that. That's, whew, that's intense work. Hey, fun fact, if you just have an ice fishing, ice fishing drill and you want to use that to drill these holes, A, remember you're going to run into rocks and things, you're probably going to ruin your blade, but you, you can't necessarily use the auger bit for an earth auger and your ice fishing motor because um, some of them turn in the opposite direction. I found that out the hard way. Another thing I learned about the earth augers is that they have this nice coil here, so when you run into something that makes contact, this kind of bring does a spring-loaded action here and it absorbs a lot of that shock instead of going and ripping your arm off. So it, it does pay to use the right tool. That's pretty much it. I'm absolutely satisfied with the fact that I used an auger, an earth auger, to drill all these holes. Would I do it again in a heartbeat? Yes, absolutely. Uh, will I help my friends with this? You bet. Was it worth the money I paid? Yeah, yeah, hands down. So, what would you think I did the right thing? What would you have done differently? Leave a respectful comment down below that can help someone else. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Up next in this video series, we've got, oh, my thoughts on concrete and setting posts. Yay for the notes. Uh, this is video three of a seven part series. You can watch a long video of this whole 400 foot fence that I uh, repurposed here, or a very brief one if you're short on time. Thanks a lot for watching. I've been Christopher. Take care.